Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be showing you how to build a simple two-player tic-tac-toe game using Python and Pygame. It includes a clean interface, live turn indicators, and a replay button. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first thing we need is the Pygame module. So in your terminal, go ahead and type pip install Pygame, and you should have it in no time. Now let's start writing some actual Python. We're going to start off by importing Pygame and also Sys. We'll use Pygame to handle all the graphics and the game loop, and Sys will be used to properly close our program and make sure it's not running in the background. Then we're going to initialize Pygame. Next, we're going to create our first variable and we're going to call it size and I'll set it to 300. This will be our board size, 300 pixels by 300 pixels. Then I have another variable called margin top and I'll set it to 50. We're leaving 50 pixels at the top for our status messages, like whose turn it is to play, who won, and if it's a draw. Now I'll create a variable called screen and I'll set it to Pygame display set mode size size plus margin top. This will tell Pygame that the window should be in those parameters that we set earlier. So it should be a game window with a bit of extra height for the message area. Then we're going to say Pygame display set caption tic-tac-toe, which is the text at the corner of our window, basically the name of our program. Now we're going to create a variable and we're going to call it font and we're going to set it to Pygame font system font none with a size of 40. This will be the font of our game messages. Then another variable called small font and I'll set it to Pygame font sys font none with a size of 30. This will be the font of the replay button. To keep things simple, we'll keep it as a system font. Next, we're going to create a variable called board and I'll set it to none times three for in range three. This creates a three by three grid, like a tic-tac-toe board, where each cell is initially set to none. Then we're going to create another variable and we're going to call it player and we're going to set it to X. This simply means that the starting player is going to be X. So in our game, the starting player will always be X. Next, we're going to have a variable called game over and we're going to set it to false. This creates a flag or a boolean value that keeps track whether the game has ended or not. So at the start of the game, game over is set to false because the game is still in progress. After someone wins or the board is full, for example, a draw, game over is set to true. Once it's true, the game stops accepting player moves and shows a replay button instead. Then we're going to have a variable called winner, but it's set to 9 at the start because no one has won yet. This 9 over here means no winner yet. Later, if someone wins, this variable will update to X or O. If the game is a draw, it might also be used to check for that condition when combined with other logic. Now we're going to define a function and we're going to call it draw board. In this function, we're going to have screen fill and you're going to have white in these parentheses. This will create a blank white screen where our game will be played. Next, we're going to say pygame draw rect screen 230, 230, 230, 00, size margin top. This fills the top margin with a light gray background for the messages. This 230, 230, 230 is the RGB for gray. Now we're going to say for i in range 1 and 3, pygame draw line screen black with this also. I'll explain what this does in just a moment. We're also going to say pygame draw screen black with this as well. This first part over here is the starting point. Left side row i adjusted for top margin. This second line over here draws a vertical line. The first part is the starting point, the top column, just below the margin. The second part is the end point, the bottom column. The reason we use i times 100 is because each cell is 100 by 100 pixels. So by multiplying, it gives us the correct line position between the cells. So basically, these two lines draw the grid on the screen, two horizontal and two vertical lines that split the board into three by three cells. Now we're going to say for r in range 3, for c in range 3, if board r and c. Now we're going to have a variable called color and we'll set it to red if board rc equals 12, else blue. We're going to have another variable called text and we'll set it to text font render board rc true color. And one more variable called rect and we'll set it to text get rect and have this in these. And screen blit text rect. So here's what's going on over here. By the way, this rnc stands for rows and columns. So this code goes through each cell. So you think of each cell as the block where you place your X and O marks. And if the cell contains a move, it draws an X in red or an O in blue at the center of that cell or at the center of that block. So for each X and O on the board, we render it in red or blue and draw it on the correct grid cell. Next, we're going to define another function and this time we're going to call it check winner. In this function, we're going to have a variable called lines and I'll set it to board plus list call for call zip board. Lines append board for i in range 3. Lines append board i for i in range 3. These lines create a list of all possible winning lines, rows, columns, diagonals. 
So the function can check if any of the three contain the same symbol. So this first line checks if there are any three in a row in rows and columns. This next one checks if there are any three in a row diagonally. And this last one checks if there are any three in a row anti-diagonally, if that makes sense. Now we're going to say for line in lines, if line equals x times 3, return x. If line equals 0 times 3, return o. So if any of the lines has 3 x's or 3 o's, we return that player as the winner. If all cell for cell in row, for row in board, return draw, return none. So if the board is full and there's no winner, it's a draw. Now we're going to define another function and we're going to call it draw message. And we're going to give it one parameter, msg. In here, we're going to have pi game draw rect screen 230, 230, 230, which is the RGB for gray, like we said earlier. This triple zero over here is the size margin top. This will fill the top margin with gray, like color. Next, you're going to have a variable called text. And in here, we're going to have font render msg true and in green. This uses the font object to create a new image on the surface of the text you want to display. msg is a string message you want to draw, like x turn or o wins. True enables anti-analyzing, which smoothes the edges of the text to make it look nicer. Green is going to be the color of our text. Then we want to have a variable called rect, and we want to set it to rect text get rect center size 2 margin top 2. This gets a rectangle that fits exactly around the rendered text. The center size 2 margin top 2 part positions the rectangle center at a specific point. Size divided by 2 is half the width of the game window, so horizontally centered. Margin top divided by 2 is half the height of the top margin area, so vertically centered with the top message bar. Then we're going to end off this function with screen blurred text rect. This puts the text onto the screen at the position specified by rect. This is how the message xo shows up visually in your game window. Next, we're going to define another function called draw button. In this function, we're going to have a variable called button rect, and we're going to set it to pi game rect. And in these parentheses, this line creates a rectangle button area 100 pixels wide and 30 pixels tall positioned horizontally centered just below the 300 by 300 game board to represent the clickable replay buttons area. Now we're going to say pi gain draw right screen light gray button rect. This draws a light gray background for the replay button on the game window where the button will appear. Then we'll have a variable called text and we want to have it in a small font render replay true black. This uses a small font object to create an image surface of the text replay. True enables anti-analyzing like we said earlier to make the edges look smoother. Black is going to be the color of our text. Next we're going to say screen blurred text, text get rect center button, rect center return button rect. So text is the render replay text surface. Text get rect creates a rectangle that fits the text and centers it exactly inside the button react, the replay button's rectangle. Screen blurt then draws the text onto the screen at that centered position. Returns the rectangle object representing the replay button's area. This is useful so that our program can later check if a mouse click has happened inside this button area. For example, to detect clicks on the replay. Now we're going to start with the main game loop. So we're going to say while true, and then here we're going to say for event in pi game, event get, if event type equals pi game quit, pi game quit sys exit. If the player clicks the close button, we quit the game and close it in the background as well. Then we're going to say if event equals pi game, mouse button down, and not game over. Next, we're going to have x and y variables, and we're going to set them to event position. If y is greater than margin top and y is less than size plus margin top, call row equals x divided by 100. So when the game is running and the player clicks, we get the cell based on their mouse position. Now we're going to say if not board row call, board row call equals player. Then we have a variable called winner and we'll set it to check winner. Next we're going to say if winner game over equals true, else player O, if player X, else X. This checks if the cell is empty. If it is, we place the symbol, check for the winner and switch turns. Now we're going to say LF event type equals pi game mouse button and game over. If draw button collide points event position, board nine times three for range in three, player equals X, game equals false, winner equals none. This checks if the game is over. When the game is over, and the replay button is click, we reset everything on the board. Next, we're gonna say draw board if game over, if winner equals draw, else draw message winner wins. Draw button, else draw message player's turn. Pi game display flip. So over here, we draw the board and the message in every frame. 
If the game's over, we show the results and the replay button. If the game is not over, we show whose turn it is to play. And finally, Pygame Display Flip will flip the display to update everything. And that's it, we're done coding this game. You can now go ahead and run the program and you've got a working two-player tic-tac-toe game with turn messages and a replay button. Simple, clean and ready to expand. And that's it for this one. If you enjoyed or found this video helpful in any way, shape or form, then consider leaving a like and subscribing. Turn on post notifications to be the first to know when I upload a new video. Also, I'm always looking to improve. If you have any constructive criticism or any questions or just want to say hi, then leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, thanks for watching. Peace.